And today we're going to talk about hockey sticks. Because I like hockey, and this is my video. The first hockey sticks were found in the forest and were simply the curved trunks of the trees that grew from the hillside. Eventually, with an increased demand, companies like CCM and Sherwood started making hockey sticks en masse. In their infancy, hockey sticks were hand carved and sold for 45 cents a dozen, roughly $12 in today's currency, and a far cry from what an average stick will run you today, but more on that later. Today's hockey sticks are absolutely not carved. Wooden sticks are of course still available, but are produced en masse and consist of a wooden blade that is permanently affixed to a wooden shaft. But since the early part of the 21st century, there's been near universal adoption of one-piece sticks. These are made from various materials such as carbon fiber and graphite and plastic and are in almost always superior to wooden sticks, which is something we're going to examine today. If you're going to purchase a piece of hockey gear, there are a couple of things that you're going to want to consider. Those being price and performance. And there are a couple of subcategories in the performance side. So what do you want in a hockey stick? Certainly you want to be able to control the puck well, and you definitely want to get it on net as fast as possible. On the first point, puck control, a wooden stick can perform reasonably well right off the rack. Some are even of the opinion that the feel of the puck on the blade of a wooden stick is superior to that of the blade of a composite one-piece stick. And while that may be true right off the rack, after a couple of games, this is no longer the case. A wooden stick will lose its pop almost immediately. After a game of beer league hockey, I notice a significant loss in performance. When the puck hits the blade or when the blade hits the ice, it does so with a thud and with no pop at all. For me, this means that the feel of the puck is absorbed too well by the blade and less of that feeling reaches my hands farther up the shaft making it more difficult to control the puck efficiently. The blade of a one-piece stick isn't necessarily any more rigid than that of a wooden stick. But the key piece is that the rigidity remains. In my experience in hockey, most players will play once a week during the season and not at all during the summer. So we're talking about 35-40 games a year. And that means 35-40 to 40 times using the stick in a year. This stick here, I've been using for about two years. It's still going strong. That one there, made of wood, was spent after two games. And for our purposes, lasting means retaining the pop that I mentioned before. But if we're talking about lasting, we also have to talk about catastrophic failure. That being the stick breaking during normal use. Now certainly a few of these examples don't quite meet that criteria, but hundreds do every season in the NHL. And this is something that's happened to me both when using wooden and one-piece sticks. But the trick with a wooden stick is that one can usually notice a crack or an imperfection in the shaft before winding up for a big shot. With a one-piece stick, they tend to seem fine until they aren't anymore. Also in the performance category is going to be the weight. Now I've got two sticks right here, both Sherwood, both cut to the same length, and both with the same exact tape job. Let's see what the difference in weight will be between the two. So first up, the classic Sherwood 50-30 with a coffee curve. Ask anyone you know who plays hockey and they're going to know what I'm talking about. It comes in, as we can see, at 596 grams, which isn't too, too bad when we consider that this is more or less the same technology that's been in use for over a century. But now we'll have a look at the Sherwood 150 BPM and see what it comes in at. And it tops out at a weight of 415 grams. That's a difference of 181 grams, or put another way, the one piece is 33% lighter, and that is not insignificant. The importance of the stick's ability to flex cannot be overstated either. Previously, we were talking about the rigidity of the blade, and that's important for sure. But the shaft of the stick it needs to be able to move, to flex. When we shoot, we're actually striking the ice before we hit the puck, so that when the puck leaves the blade, the shaft is giving it a little extra push. Check it out. Al McInnes is regarded by most as having had the most feared shot in NHL history, and he did that with a wooden stick. In today's NHL, the mantle belongs to Zdeno Chara. 
but McInnes's hardest recorded slap shot ever clocked in at only 100.4 miles per hour, while Chara managed a blistering 108.8. And since the one-piece stick took over, we've seen a consistent uptick in shot strength among players at the hardest shot competition during the NHL's annual All-Star Game. Between 1990 and 2000, only two players managed to crack the 100 mile per hour barrier at the event, both while using wooden sticks as it happens. But since 2001, when the first one piece sticks started to become available, there have been nine different winners. This suggests that the technology has made everyone a much better shooter. And the last thing to consider is price. I got this Sherwood 5030 at Canadian Tire for about $30. Whereas a top flight one piece stick can run you a cool 300. So the choice is clear and, and it's the one piece. This one piece has lasted me over two years and I play in the summer. So we're talking like a hundred games while the wood stick was done after two. So at two games, that's $15 per versus $3 per for the one piece. And that's without even considering that the wood stick is heavier and offers weaker performance than its more expensive counterpart. And then on top of all that, We've only talked about top-end one-piece sticks. It's very easy to get a low-end one-piece for around 70 bucks, and that'll last you just as long as its pricier brethren. So really, you can't go wrong. Let's take it to a side-by-side. -side. And on the left-hand side, we have the one-piece composite hockey stick, modern technology. On the right-hand side, we have the wooden stick, tradition. And the case is pretty cut and dry. One-piece sticks offer a far superior performance in terms of shot strength and puck handling ability. And this is due to the superior flexibility of the carbon fiber shaft and the superior rigidity of the reinforced blade. In addition to that, they are considerably lighter, which does make a big difference. And the blade can stay rigid for years without losing its pop. It's said that in the 1970s, Bobby Orr would go through as many as 120 sticks during a 70-game season. In today's NHL, players are more likely to use a new stick every game or two. Certainly that's a lot less than my two years of use, but I'm not playing at quite that level, and they're not exactly strapped for cash. And that brings us to the value aspect. Personally, I would way prefer to spend a couple of hundred dollars every year or two on a new stick that performs excellently the entire time, than spend thirty dollars every couple of games for a new stick that's heavy and inferior. On the wooden stick side of things, well, the only thing that's left to be said is, why would anyone still use a wooden stick?